Hello everybody and welcome to Barca News. It is June 9th, 2022 and I have a lot of exciting news to share with you. It seems that Barcelona's president, Joan Laporta, has been busy and has attended two pivotal meetings, one with super agent Jorge Mendes and the other one with the club members to discuss the club's financial situation. I will share all the details of these meetings with you and I will also share other news such as Gavi's renewal and more news about the Robert Lewandowski saga. We have lots to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, my name is Mo and I created this channel so it could be a one-stop shop for all Barcelona fans where they can come here and get the latest news regarding FC Barcelona. Whether it be transfer rumors, injury updates, post-match analysis or anything else, you will find it here. So I invite all of you to please subscribe to my channel so you can stay current on the latest news regarding our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Now we'll begin the news with that important meeting between Juan Laporta and super agent Jorge Mendes. Now Jorge Mendes is, a, is an agent to many players and many stars all across the world. In fact, he's an agent to many of Barcelona players such as Ansu Fati, Nico Gonzalez, and even Francisco Trincao. He's also someone who yields a lot of influence on many clubs, such as Wolverhampton. We saw that when he helped us with the sale of Nelson Semedo. He's also someone who yields influence on a club like Valencia. He's currently acting like the sporting director of Valencia, deciding which players leave, which players stay, and which players Valencia are going to try to acquire in the summer transfer window. We've also seen Jorge Mendes act as an intermediary between clubs when it comes to the transfer of football players. So Jorge Mendes is definitely someone who's very key in the football transfer market and it's good to see Juan Laporta cultivating a positive relationship with him because Jorge Mendes is someone who you definitely want on your side when it comes to the football transfer market. Now the first name that came up during this meeting was that of Francisco Trincao. Trincao is currently on loan to Wolverhampton but that loan will end this summer and we'll see Trincao come back to Barcelona. However, Barcelona are not counting on Trincao and they're looking to offload him. Well, it seems that Sporting Lisbon are interested in acquiring Trincao, but because of his high wages, uh, they're only interested in the loan. Now, it seems that Barcelona are insisting on putting an obligation to purchase in that contract in case Trincao does end up going to Sporting Lisbon on the loan. We saw Barcelona do this uh, in a contract when they lent Trincao to Wolverhampton. However, Wolverhampton did not want to keep Trincao, so they ended up paying a penalty and Barcelona made 6 million euros off that loan. Well, it seems that Barcelona want to do the same thing in this contract in case Trincao does go to Sporting. They want to put that obligation to buy in a contract. Uh, that way Sporting takes off um, Trincao off our hands on a permanent deal once next season is over and if they don't want to take him off on a permanent deal then we'll see them pay a penalty and we'll see a much needed income come into the club's coffers. Now the second name that came up was that of Clément Lenglet. Um, as I mentioned before the club does not count on the French defender next season so they're looking to offload him. Uh, well it seems that Jorge Mendes brought to the table an offer from the Portuguese club Porto, seems that Porto are interested in acquiring um, Clement Lenglet, but because of his high wages, they would only be interested in the loan. Uh, we're seeing this with a lot of the players um, that the, uh, whose contracts were handed out by Bartomeu. Uh, because of their high wages, these wages who are way above uh, their market value, seems that clubs are not interested in purchasing these players because they would have to pay a transfer fee and they would have to pay these uh, players high salaries, which is something that a lot of clubs simply cannot afford. So they prefer to do a loan where they, can, where they only have to pay the wages uh, and not the transfer um, fee. Now another uh, name that came up was that of Nico Gonzalez. Now Barcelona have been on a hunt to replace uh, Sergio Busquets. Sergio Busquets contract is up next year in 2023 and it seems that neither party is interested in renewing that contract. It seems that Sergio Busquets, uh, once his contract is up, he wants to go to the MLS to finish his career off. Uh, so Barcelona have been on a hunt trying to find a replacement for Busquets. Uh, initially they have picked Nico Gonzalez. And at the beginning of, uh, of the season when he began playing with the senior team, he showed a lot of promise. 
but as the season passed by, his performance began to decline, and it seems that that decline is due to his mental state. It seems that Nico Gonzalez uh, has a lot of extracurricular activity that are distracting him away from his training, and he's lost focus and concentration on his training and on his development. Um, so the club decided that they wanted um, to offload Nico Gonzalez. They wanted to do a swap deal between uh, Nico Gonzalez and Ruben Neves. Ruben Neves is a, is a midfielder who is currently playing at Wolverhampton. Uh, but Xavi insisted that Nico Gonzalez does not go out on the transfer deal. Uh, I reported this previously. Um, he wants Nico Gonzalez to go out on the loan. Um, to see if he can maybe re recapture that concentration and get focused again on his development and on his play because Xavi believes that Nico Gonzalez is someone with a lot of skills, a lot of talent, a lot of promise and he thinks that he's a player that's key to Barcelona's future and key to Xavi's project so he wants them to get refocused and then come back in a season or maybe two uh, so he can contribute um, to the team. Now another name that came up during this meeting is that of Joao Felix. Uh, Joao Felix is Juan Laporta's dream. He has been wanting to bring him to the club for quite some time. But because of the club's financial situation, this operation is most likely uh, impossible. Um, Atletico de Madrid paid a lot of money for Joao Felix. I think it was something around 120 million euros. So they will probably ask for a lot, mon a lot of money to let Joao Felix leave. Uh, there's also the issue of his salary. Joao Felix has a very high salary. Uh, so the, given the club's financial situation, uh, there's no way Barcelona would be able to afford the transfer fee and Joao Felix's um, salary. Uh, another name that came up was that of Rafael Leao. Uh, the, this is a 22-year-old uh, Portuguese striker who currently plays at AC Milan. Uh, well, uh, Leao's contract is up and it seems that um, Joan Laporta really wants to bring the striker to Barcelona. Uh, but of course this operation will be very difficult because one, AC Milan are very keen on renewing Leao's contract. Uh, so they're most likely going to offer him a lot of money to stay there. Uh, and there's, and if, even if they're not able to renew him, uh, there's the issue of his price. Um, it is reported that Chelsea approached AC Milan and tried to get Rafael Leal from them. And it is reported that they were quoted um, 100 million euros, which is, of course, a number that Barcelona currently cannot afford. Now, the final name that came up during that meeting is that of Bernardo Silva, the Manchester City midfielder, is Xavi's uh, number one option to come and strengthen the midfield at Barcelona. It is also reported that Bernardo Silva wants to leave Manchester City because he wants to go back to Spain and be closer to his family. Uh, well, because of his high market value, it's most likely that Manchester, Manchester City is going to ask for a lot of money for his transfer. And given the club situation, a financial situation it's most likely this uh, operation is impossible unless they do sell Frankie de Jong and they use the profits to buy Bernardo Silva um, now of course as of today there are no official offers from Manchester United from Frankie de Jong uh, and Frankie de Jong is still keen on remaining in Barcelona and not leaving to Manchester United and Xavi initially was also keen on keeping Frankie de Jong, but it's now reported that he has become more accepting of the idea of Frankie de Jong leaving the club, and he's become more open to that possibility. And if he can get someone like Bernardo Silva, then he, of course, will be a lot more keen, a lot more accepting of Frankie de Jong leaving and being replaced uh, by his number one option, which is Bernardo Silva. But of course, there remains the obstacle of Frankie de Jong. He does have a contract with Barcelona and he, he will only be able to leave if he wants to. Now on to the next meeting that Juan Laporta had and that is the meeting with the club's senators. Now you might ask, what are the Barcelona senators? Where are the Barcelona senators are the club's oldest members. And when I say oldest members, I don't mean by age. I mean uh, those people who have been members of the club the longest. Uh, well, as I've reported in a previous video, which I will leave the link for down below, Barcelona is trying to close out three major financial deals uh, or what they call financial levers that will bring in a lot of money and much needed money to the club. Uh, these deals will be the sale of the Barca licensing merchandise, the sale of Barca Studios, and the sale of Barca media rights. Um, well, given that the club, that Barcelona is a member-owned club, these deals cannot go through unless the members vote on it. And there's a vote scheduled on the 16th, 16th of June. 
uh, and Juan Laporta met with the club senators in order to discuss these deals and in order to try to persuade him to vote in favor of these deals. He said that these deals are very important to the club, they're necessary to the club. If, uh, if they're approved, then we will finally go back to a positive net worth, then we would have a normal debt ratio, and that we can once again become competitive. And Juan Laporta stressed the importance of, becoming, uh, of being able to compete with what he calls state clubs. Uh, well, after the meeting, uh, it seems that there were a lot of club senators who, who were not really convinced they think that the club, uh, that the meeting lacked transparency, that they weren't very sure about these financial deals. So we'll have to keep our eye uh, on this situation, on this developing situation, and see what does happen on June 16th during this meeting. Of course, I will keep you updated, so stay in tune to this channel. Now, speaking of the club finances, uh, I reported previously that the club is trying to implement wage cuts on all the players whose contracts were handed out by Bartomeu. Uh, because they're trying to implement a strict pay scale on all the players across the board and the club was really counting on the on on the barcelona captains to be the first ones to accept the wage cuts because not only are they the highest earners but also as captains if they're to accept the wage cuts they will be setting an example for the rest of the squad uh, well, as, as I reported previously, Sergi Roberto has agreed to a 60% wage cut and Gerard Piquet has also said that he has no problem in reducing his salary, that he's willing to put the club's financial needs ahead of his. Uh, well, it was reported in the media that Sergio Busquets and Jordi Alba, the other two captains, were not willing to do um, the wage cuts and they were not willing to accept them and that the club was very disappointed in that decision. Well today, Sergio Busquets came out in the media and stated that he does not know anything about any wage, uh, wage cuts, that the club has not contacted him about reducing his salary, and that the only thing he knows about the wage cuts is what he has read in the media, and that it's completely false, that he would totally be willing to reduce his salary, that he's willing to help out the club as much as possible. Uh, so let's hope that Sergio Busquets um, does put some action behind those words because this is some dire time for the club and we need everybody to pitch in as much as possible for the club's survival. Now on to the news of Gabi's renewal. Uh, it seems that Gabi will be placed in the same pay, pay scale as Ansu Fati and Pedri earning around 4 to 5 million euros. Of course I reported earlier this week that Gabi wanted a higher salary um, however, the club is not willing to raise his salary, uh, so hopefully this do does not become a contentious issue and hopefully we can see Gabi sign his contract, his renewal, and we can put this matter um, to bed. Now we end today's video with the brief news that Juan Laporta has called Robert Lewandowski's agent, Penny Savi, to thank him uh, for all of what Robert Lewandowski is doing, for all his gestures and insistence on coming to Barcelona. Of course, I've reported about this many, many times. Robert Lewandowski has been consistently in the media making statements about how he's done with Bayern Munich, how he wants to leave Bayern Munich, how he wants to come to Barcelona, that he's not hearing any offers, that his only interest is to come to Barcelona and wear that Blaurana jersey. Uh, so that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I invite all of you to please leave a comment giving me your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I invite all of you to please subscribe to my channel so you can stay current on all the latest news regarding FC Barcelona. Uh, so thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, Pisca Barca.